We created Tinky Drone as a passion project, really. It was the kind of the apex of research and development for my own personal drone for several years, about two years, where I kept perfecting different designs that I had and different techniques that I had until I really came up with something that I absolutely loved. And I worked with it with my other co-designer, Yuki, to create this amazing shape and really cool design. And when we looked at it, we decided that this is such a cool and awesome looking quadcopter that really we need to give it to the world. And also we designed it with the idea of using injection molded plastic um, <clears throat> as the kind of key uh, design feature of the, of the drone. And to make injection molded plastic, it's really impractical to make it in batches of five or 10. You have to mass manufacture it because of all the tooling and all the expense that goes in order to make that, that kind of plastic. But we designed Tanky with injection molded plastic because of our research and development into injection molded materials and realization how incredibly tough those materials are. Plastics uh, do not necessarily have the uh, reputation for being incredibly tough, but they are. I mean, bulletproof glass is made out of plastic, out of polycarbonate, and this is the kind of stuff that we're gonna be using for Tanky. So Tinky was really a drone that we made for ourselves, our team, and then we decided to sell it because, and give it to the world because of how awesome it is. This is the latest prototype of Tinky drone that we've created. We're actually testing the T-Motor F40 II motors. They're 2600 kilovolts, very, very fast. Uh, 2305 motors, they actually produce approximately 1.3 kilos of thrust each. And we are hoping to get a 1.8, or I'm sorry, 11.8 to one um, power to weight ratio, which will be quite unprecedented even for custom made drones. And that kind of shows what Tinky is meant to be. Tinky is meant to be a custom made drone or have the performance of a custom made drone in a ready to fly package. Uh, we design Tinky for people who don't necessarily have the time to devote to building and putting together that custom drone, but they really are looking forward to going out there racing or just flying around really fast and enjoying the FPV hobby. So Tinky is a ready-to-run racing FPV quadcopter. Well, the first thing that makes Tinky different from other racing drones available on the market is it's ready to fly. You get it in a box, you open it, you get your little Tinky, and you can put a battery in it and you can start flying. This is by comparison to other kits on the market where you have to put it yourself, or a lot of times it's other racing frames and you have to research and decide on the components that you're gonna put into that frame, which is great. It's great for people who want to do that, but there are some people who do not have the time or the skills to do that, and they really don't want to. They just want to buy something that's really cool and ready to go and go out and race it. And this is what who Tanky is designed for. But also Tanky was designed to be incredibly balanced. We designed it to put all of the electronics, all of the weight in the very center of the quad, in the very center of the canopy, with the battery underneath it. So this results in Tinky being perfectly balanced in the horizontal axis and in the Z axis and side to side. It's completely balanced. It's like a little ball with four motors around it. And what that does is it allows you to flip and roll Tinky incredibly fast to take turns and to perform acrobatic moves. So Tanky is really well balanced, ready to fly, and it has, as far as I know, the first tiltable camera in a drone that allows you to tilt the camera down so you can use it to fly around and cruise, or tilt the camera up, as it is right now, so you can really lean in and hit really fast speeds. In fact, at top speed, Tanky leans in by almost 80 degrees or more. So Tinky is just a complete package. You take it out of the box, you race it, and it has really cool features to make it on par with every single other racing drone out there, but with some additional features. Personally, I think drone racing has become so popular because it's accessible. 
it's accessible to anyone. Uh, think about it this way, even if you take something uh, like motorcycle racing, which is a more accessible sport, motorsport, uh, because motorcycles are not nearly as expensive as, as high-end cars, even in that, you still have to purchase insurance, you have to purchase a, a five to $10,000 motorcycle, even if you're buying it used, or $15,000 for a new motorcycle. Uh, a bunch of gear and equipment, you have to travel to places, and then you engage into a fairly dangerous sport, uh, which is very exciting. I've raced motorcycles before myself, but it's also very pricey. By comparison, drone racing, is accessible, it's safe, you can do it in a community nearby you, and it's inexpensive by comparison. You know, you can get into drone racing with something like Tanky, for instance, for about $600, or even if you build your own drone, you know, for under $1,000, you'll basically have everything you need to go and race. And I know it's not cheap, but at the same time, it pales in comparison to what you would spend to go race a car. Oh, motorcycle. So it gives you that experience of competing with other people and getting that adrenaline rush, rush of going super fast while staying safe and not spending too much money on it. And I think that kind of attitude, it's kind of the old American attitude of opportunity. Everyone has opportunity to engage in this sport. And what's really cool about this sport also is you see how people in the sport, especially people at the top, uh, keep changing. You keep getting new names and new faces in those top, uh, in that top of the letter boards. And that's because you constantly get new blood into the sport. Whereas sports like motor racing or, uh, you know, cross uh, car racing, uh, you have the same people on it over and over again. So I think it's exciting. It provides people with opportunity to engage in this sport. And it makes everyone feel like they have a shot. And I think that's why it's becoming so popular nowadays. Um, without a crystal ball, I wouldn't be able to tell you what the future of drone racing would be. But I think it's going to change. Uh, currently, we have a lot of drone racing where you're not really taking advantage of the quadcopter frame. You're not really taking advantage of the fact that this is a three-dimensional machine that can go up and down as well as left and right and forward. Um, a lot of drone racing is laid out on a very flat track with gates and I know it's very difficult and takes a lot of skill to fly low, but I think in the future we'll see drone racing that takes place on mountains or goes through hoops that are mounted high up in the air. Uh, even in the most recent multi-GP uh, racing, they had races, they had hoops that are about 10 to 15 feet in the air, 20 feet in the air, where you have to go over the uh, track and go up and go through the hoops. And that was the most exciting part of the race. So I think in the future you'll see hoops that are mounted uh, horizontally where you have to dive through them. You may see the sides of cliffs uh, where you have to go up a cliff and then go down a cliff through the hoops. Things like that I think will really make the sport a lot more exciting. Um, the other place where I see drone racing going, and you have to remember that drone racing isn't necessarily limited to quadcopters, is also flying wings. Um, very powerful, small sized uh, flying wings that can vector their thrust. I think are going to be also uh, one of the futures of the hobby. Uh, to make the hobby, or to make the motor race, uh, the drone racing really exciting, however, the very first thing that will need to happen is better FPV systems. Uh, currently, there's a few companies coming on the market, for instance, the ProSight uh, system that I just released was released recently that provides a digital link so you can see the images a lot more clearly in uh, digital HD. Um, but there are some problems with that system still. You know, it's a little bit more latency than you would see on a traditional analog system such as the system that Tinky uses. Um, so a lot of racers are still a little skeptical about it, but in order to make professional drone racing in reality, I think what we'll have to do is go to a digital system, probably not an HD digital system, but an analog, uh, or lower resolution, standard resolution 
uh, digital system to allow 20 to 30 pilots to be up in the air at the same time. When we have the ability to raise uh, 20 or 30 pilots at the same time, that's when the races are going to become really exciting and really interesting. So I think that's the future of um, quadcopter racing and drone racing in general. Uh, the way I see that being achieved is probably in the same way uh, NASCAR or other professional events do that, where you actually purchase licensed bandwidth and you're going to get a lot more racers on a lot of a broader spectrum of uh, frequencies, you know, going from 3000 uh, megahertz to, or oh, gigahertz, yeah, 3 gigahertz, all the way to five or six gigahertz, you purchase that spectrum and you run a lot more quadcopters at the same time. That will be much more fun for the spectators and uh, also a lot more interesting for the participants as well. I think one of the top complaints at almost every race you go to is the fact that you don't get to race enough. Uh, you go there for the whole day and you run through maybe one or two packs, maybe three packs, and uh, you're either eliminated or even if you're not eliminated, uh, you still don't get to race that much. So I think those kind of technological innovations are going to really drive the sport forward on the professional level. On the uh, hobby level, I think we're going to see a lot more ready-to-fly uh, quadcopters, such as Tanky and perhaps others, uh, that are going to open up the sport for people who are really interested in the sport, but are not necessarily the kind of people who would build their own stuff or build their own drone. Just like, you know, if you want to engage in motorcycle racing, you don't go out there and start learning how to TIG weld and uh, bend aluminum piping to make your own motorcycle. You go out and buy a motorcycle. So I think ready-to-fly quadcopters such as this will really open up the sport for more amateur professionals, people who want to go out and race but not necessarily build their own stuff. And that's my thoughts about the future of drone racing.